Hello, everybody. Um, today, I'm going to discuss hypertension genetics in sex, as, as a sex dependent. This uh, study was led by Roy Zucker from my lab. And uh, let's get going. So what's hypertension? Hypertension is a condition in which there is uh, persistent high blood pressure. And uh, as you can see, it is uh, measured by a systolic and diastolic uh, value. However, it's only the combination of both that really define clinically this hypertension. Now, hypertension is also known as the silent killer. And the reason being that we have over 1 billion people in the world that have hypertension to some degree. Many of them do not know it. However, uh, it comes with a lot of complications such as stroke and heart attack, uh, loss of vision loss, and so on. So it's a really chronic and complicated disease. Now, uh, hypertension, uh, if we just uh, look at the rough number numbers, uh, they are about one in four male, adult male, that have hypertension with one out of five in women. So there is some uh, difference in prevalence of both. Uh, this is also reflected by some uh, distribution, non-equal distribution around the globe. As, in, as you can see in Africa, the level is extremely high, same as the, in the Middle East, but much less so in different parts of the world like uh, China and so on. So, one aspect of uh, hypertension from clinical point of view that is worth uh, mentioning is the fact that uh, any reduce of even 5 to 10% in the value of uh, the blood pressure can make a big difference. And this can be illustrated here. Uh, a change in only 13 units uh, in the systolic blood uh, pressure reduce stroke by almost 40%, 20% heart diseases, and so on. So definitely, uh, we wanted to ask, can genetics be used in hypertension control plan? And to start to answer this question, we have to better understand what are the factors affecting hypertension. So a set of factors that we call them modifiable factors include nutrition and physical activity, smoking, and so on. But today, I would like to talk about the non-modifiable factors and specifically about genetics and sex. However, we should also remember that hypertension prevalence increases by age. So age is really important. Now, the data that we are uh, studying is uh, the UK Biobank which is a really enormous uh, resource of uh, half a million people that were admitted throughout uh, the UK uh, from 2006 to 2010. And uh, more importantly, the data include, uh, includes the, uh, information from many layers, such as medical records, including lab results, procedures, and so on, self-reporting, uh, uh, documents, lifestyle, especially nutrition, mental uh, health, and so on, but also uh, to our discussion, the genetics. And when I say genetics, I mean every each and every one of those patients have its genotype uh, done. And recently, uh, most of the population do have also an exome and recently also all genome sequence. So the question that we are the research goal of this study is really to provide interpretation for hypertension genetics. And to better understand this, I have to introduce uh, shortly PWAS, which is a gene-based association method that was developed in our lab, in which the idea is to look at genetic variants, specifically those that occur within proteins, and instead of inferring the phenotype, directly or associate to the phenotype, associate to the protein function, and then from protein function, it's much easier to get to the phenotype. So in a schematic view, we take all the variants that are of interest 
and all the samples that are of interest. And from that, we built uh, uh, two models, one for dominant effect and the other for recessive. And the, the two are really different in the sense that in the dominant, we need to have only one, one uh, damage uh, to cause the, the disease, while in the recessive, we need two. And then we add uh, a lot of covariance and we cook some uh, number, which is the effect size of PWAS. And just to give you the feeling on the number, we are talking about this number of coding variants that we are analyzing and each protein out of the 18,000 genes have on average 35 to 40 variants. So in a more specific, just to say this, how the scheme works, the scheme works by uh, uh, looking at each of the variants using FIRM, which is a machine learning that was trained to learn the protein function effect of each variant. And then, as I mentioned, dominant and recessive uh, value. So we have gene effect score by irritability. And then we are looking at a case control setting in which those people have hypertension, those do not have. And then we compare the distribution of the value of the effect size, the score, to get a list of PWAS, a list. Just to give you a feeling how a classical or one example of a gene look like. So this is the gene. You can see all those uh, variants. Some of them are in green because they are not damaging. Those in red are more damaging. And then we have cases in which uh, the risk is increasing or decreasing. And we also mark those that GWAS could identify by itself. So you can see that it's a pretty complex uh, situation. However, from this, we uh, design a dominant, recessive, and a hybrid score. Now, to give you a feeling why we are doing it, uh, we, we wanted to address some of the limitation of GWAS, specifically the fact that GWAS do use additivity in order to uh, uh, get the association. Again, interpretation is quite hard. Uh, because variant to gene uh, matching is, is not trivial, the statistics is hard, and so on. In PWAS, we are trying to overcome a, a, a much of those uh, limitations by having rich heritability models. The interpretation is much easier, the mapping is easier because we are starting with protein only, and then the statistics is much easier because we are only talking about 18,000 genes and not millions of variants. So. Just to give an example, the interpretation is quite direct because we are talking about protein function and the effect is uh, are normalized to zero to one. Zero means the protein doesn't have any leftover function. One means did not affect it. And we are also use this irritability as I mentioned, but just to give you a feeling, the PWAS allow uh, genes a gene to be affected by two different variants that together cause uh, damage uh, where uh, GWAS uh, have a hard time doing it. So when you compare everything that was done by GWAS, we can find that there are over 1300 genes that were associated somehow with many hypertension GWAS studies. However, uh, PWAS, which is much more solid, uh, and then uh, have already only identified 70 uh, genes at a high level. And quite surprisingly, the overlap with the large set of uh, GWAS is, is partial. Now, when you look at the, uh, those 70, we were able to see that 18% of them were only detected as a recessive uh, inheritance. And that's quite important because that means those genes could not be identified by GWAS. Another uh, observation that were not clear in, from the beginning is that about half of the genes are protective and half are risk. And this is uh, illustrated by the color. So to wrap up this part, uh, we have 70 genes. The 70 genes, half of them have protective are genes with protective uh, function, 
18% are uh, of the gene complies with recessive inheritance. And I should also mention that the gene effect, each and every one of the variants is quite low. Now the, uh, we wanted to look at it through sex and we ask whether if we separate the uh, cohort to female and male, what do we get? And indeed, immediately we have seen that there are more male than female in the cohort that have hypertension. And uh, we repeat the same uh, procedure as I explained before. When we start by looking at GWAS, just to make sure that we are uh, not, uh, th that, that GWAS also can capture some of this effect, we are able to find in the coding region itself. So now we perform GWAS on about 600,000 uh, uh, variants within the coding region. And immediately we have seen some genes, not that many, that have really very big difference if you look at females versus male. So we wanted to, to, to look at the same, but this time from the uh, perspective of PWAS on sex. When we look at this, we uh, what I show you here is the minus log 10 of the hybrid mode, which means uh, both a dominant of recessive uh, inheritance. And here we look what is the, the uh, difference in the two sexes. Each sex is by different color. So the blue and the uh, red are the female, uh, male and female respectively. So you can see that the distribution is not the same. And we can look at it in an even sharper way by look at male versus female in terms of uh, how much uh, confidence we have for each. And immediately you see that most of the signal in this indeed is in a female uh, and only one gene is more uh, prevalent in, in male. When we compare all those 70 genes that we have discussed before, we were able to find for exclusive female genes that cannot be found by any other model, none in the male, but only one of them uh, is shared between the two sexes and the hybrid uh, provide most of the signal. So here is a list of the female significant PWAS genes that are significant above this uh, threshold line. And if we just take the first 10 this is, by the way, the one that is shared. And this, this shared one is very important in autoimmunity, such as celiac, type 1 diabetes, and so on. If we look at the top list, uh, we find something that was unexpected, but uh, very ensuring that many of those genes are marked here in uh, yellow, are involved in the uh, immune system, either in the innate immune system, in T cell, macrophage, dendritic cells, autoimmunity, and so on. Actually, we could see that some of those uh, observation is duplicated by having the expression, maximal expression in relevant immune uh, organs. And as you can see, those genes, if we just uh, take the top one and trying to understand what can we understand from this, we realize that these specific genes is uh, located in a very active region of uh, Li6 family. This family uh, play a critical role in regulating the immune uh, response. And as you can see, they are actually similar to each other. And this phylogenetic tree showed us that all those 10 or 12 genes are indeed very related. However, if we try to look at uh, whether we have any validation from outsider, uh, outside uh, information, we found to our uh, delight that some of this gene, specific this one, this uh, variant in the intro of the gene that I just discussed is associated with hypertension diagnosis in East Asian population. And uh, I think we have uh, uh, some validation in external uh, data. The last uh, few minutes, I want to discuss PRS. PRS is a way to look at the population in term uh, while combining all variants towards prediction. And as you can see here, you can see how age is changing. I mean, the, the prevalence of hypertension is changing by 
whether you are with this genetic or with that genetic. And another way to express it is uh, by, by this scheme. For example, if you are 65 years old, this line, and you are with the 10% of the best genetics, you have only 10% uh, uh, prevalence. But if you are with the 90% of the worst genetics, you have 40% uh, of diagnosis. So you can see that it's very much depends on your genetics. So if that's the case, can we learn something from what I just told you? And to do this, we have to look at PWAS gene-based PRAs. What I mean by that? First of all, I already mentioned, but without giving you the number, that uh, females have a lower prevalence of hypertension than male. And you can see it, it's quite, uh, it's almost 1.5 1, 1 uh, ratio. However, if we take one gene that we know it's a protective gene, what does it mean protective gene? That the non-reference uh, protein, those with variants, is negatively correlated with the occurrence of hypertension. And I, I can say even more, if we take now the population, only female, and we look that the average of the population is 22.6, as I already mentioned. However, if we take the uh, genes from PWAS, the 7% of the population, we see that this population only have 21% prevalence. So this is very significant because we are talking about on thousands of people or female. If we go to the male, we see that the PRS also provide us information about a very small fraction of the top list of, um, of male, in which instead of the 32 that I already mentioned, they do have 54% of hypertension. So immediately you can see that it can be very relevant to the clinical aspect of hypertension. So to summarize what I uh, showed you as of now, I showed you that hypertension is associated with 70 significant gene. I show you that PWAS provide functional interpretation to the target gene. PWAS also highlight genetic effect in females and much less in male. Female specific genes are enriched in immunity, immune function, which was not known. PWAS provide uh, information on clinical utility by the gene PRS uh, approach. And of course, it raised uh, some hypothesis about the mechanism. And the idea is whether the mechanism for hypertension predisposition indeed differs in males and females. And the other question is, can the status of the immune system indeed determines the tendency of hypertension in females? So this is uh, for the future. And uh, I'll be more than happy to take questions and to answer. And uh, thank you for your uh, for listening. Thank you.